Are you afraid to die? Famous atheist Neil deGrasse Tyson's answer may surprise you, and I'm not sure I even believe him, but that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you find Jesus and follow him daily. A huge shout out to everyone on Patreon that makes it possible for me to continue to do this. You help this ministry keep going and growing, so thank you so much. If you wanna help support my ministry and my mission of helping you find Jesus and follow him daily, you can head on over to the link in my bio and help support for as little as five dollars a month it is a tremendous blessing on my life and this ministry by you supporting so thank you so much for doing that now on to the video now as i said we're going to be reacting to neil degrasse tyson's or at least part of his interview with larry king he had some interesting answers to some of Larry's questions. I was surprised at how deep it got, but with Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is a proclaimed famous atheist, well, maybe he's not a proclaimed famous atheist, but he's a proclaimed atheist, um, the answers and the questions seem to get pretty deep because the ideas of religion and what he thinks about the afterlife usually come up with someone who's proclaimed, you know, atheist, there's no God, there's no heaven, there's no hell. So Larry King asks him a question, are you scared of death? And it's a question that maybe you've asked yourself or maybe you've asked other people in your life. Are you afraid of dying? Well, this is how Neil deGrasse Tyson answered the question. Okay. And I can't stand the thought of non-existence. See, I already have existence. I don't, I accept Okay, it. it is true. We fear death because we are born knowing only life. Right. I get that. However, I, I, I t take another view, because I've been asked, if you could live forever, would you? Yes. <laughs> okay. We're Don't done on the interview. This <laughs> yes. Uh, no, okay, sure, that's an attractive idea. But the way I look at it is, it is the knowledge that I'm going to die that creates the focus that I bring to being alive. The urgency of accomplishment, the need to express love now, not later. If we live forever, why ever even get out of bed in the morning? Because you always have tomorrow. You know, personally, I think uh, most people's response would be much more similar to that of Larry's than that of Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know, Larry, he doesn't sound, and he's now passed on, but, <clears throat> you know, he, he didn't sound too excited about the afterlife. There seemed to be a level of fear there and uncertainty. I think you ask most people, and I have asked a lot of people on the streets and street evangelism what they think happens to them after they die, and if they're scared of death, a lot of people will say, yeah, because they just don't know. And yet a lot of us have this sense of guilt, this sense of guilt and shame that that we either need to be good people in order to you know earn our way to heaven or we need to accomplish something or we need to do something in order to assure ourselves that whatever comes after this life will be good and, and not bad. In a weird way, I can relate to Neil deGrasse Tyson's answer on this because he says, well, you know, the fact that I know I only have this life, I'm ac extra focused to make sure I accomplish the things I wanna accomplish and love the people I wanna love. That's very nice in theory. And I actually take a lot of that on in this life, even though I do believe there's a life to come. I am like, okay, well, we only have one life on this earth, so yes, you know, don't waste it. I totally get that. Um, but what Neil deGrasse Tyson neglects and what he doesn't exactly understand is that there is a life after this life. And we all kind of know that. And it's because God has put this thing in our heart, our conscience, that testifies to us not only of his existence, but also of our own sin and our own shortcomings. And we know, look, we're going to be held accountable for those things. We're just going to be let go free. 
And the Bible actually speaks of this in Hebrews 9. It says, just as a man is appointed to, to die once and after that face judgment, so also Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sins, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. You see, our conscience testifies to us that there is not only something beyond ourselves, but that we are also accountable before God. And you may be asking, why do we need to face judgment? That seems kind of harsh. Well, think about it. If God is truly good, do you think he should let people free who did terrible atrocities and just let them get into heaven? Well, no, most people would say, no, they should pay for that. But, but what about the rest of us? Because the rest of us, we haven't done that many bad things. We're generally pretty nice people. But the question is, according to what standard? You see, pretty much everyone thinks they're a good person according to their own standard because they compare themselves to other people that are worse than them. They compare, like if me, if somebody asked me, oh, am I a good person? Well, I compare myself to, you know, a criminal or a murderer or somebody like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a pretty nice person. But if all of a sudden I start comparing myself against God and his goodness, man, I look like a really, really bad person. See, when we compare ourselves to God, we fall infinitely short. So we go back to the judgment. And if God is a good judge, he has to punish sin. But he says in that verse in Hebrews, Jesus came to bear the sins of many. God didn't have to do that, but he did that out of his loving mercy and kindness. I want to go back to what Neil deGrasse Tyson said. It is the knowledge that I'm going to die that creates the focus that I bring to being alive. The urgency of accomplishment, the need to express love, well, what I would ask us is the knowledge of Jesus, um, him saving us and buying us back from bondage to sin and death, ought, shouldn't that give us focus in making sure we don't waste this life, that our life should be an overflow of that love and that grace that God has showed us and not out of fear or uh, anxiety about, oh, this is, you know, time's running, all that kind of thing, but no, rather... The time that we are given, we live it out of love for God and others. And that is produced, that, is, that produces joy and that flows out of joy and not panic and anxiety about, oh man, we're running out of time. We only have this one life, but rather look at every moment as a gift from God. And that's what I'd pray for Neil deGrasse Tyson and anybody that believes what he believes is that they would see their own guilt that their conscience would convict them of their sin, but yet they would see Jesus and the kind, merciful Father that he is, welcoming them into forgiveness and reconciliation with himself only by his grace. And that is amazing grace and, and live life out of love for him and love for others. That is true freedom. That is true meaning. That is true purpose. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe because I put out a new video every single day. The only reason I can do that is because of the people on Patreon. Thank you so much to each one of you who helped support me on there. It is because of you that I can continue to do what I am doing. So thank you so much. I will see you guys next time. God bless.